If you'd like to support this channel, please consider purchasing a copy of my book, Captain Steel and Other Stories, on Amazon, especially if you are a fan of speculative fiction. Okay, as predicted, I got a bevy of comments on my last video from longtime Star Trek fans telling me that I didn't know what I was talking about when I listed one of the misconceptions that a lot of Star Trek fans have is that on the original series, the ships of Starfleet each had their own unique badge, insignia, emblem. The belief they hold is that while the Enterprise crew all wore variations of the Delta, the other ships in Starfleet all had their own insignias in place of said Delta. Just as an aside, the Delta itself had variations depending on the ship and department the crew member worked for or was assigned to. Even though Spock was second in command, it was appropriate for him to wear the science department variant rather than Kirk's command variant because he served double duty as both the ship's science officer and first officer. It is possible that in this era, the executive slash first officer was more of a collateral duty than a full-time position like it would be later on Star Trek The Next Generation. But getting back to the subject of the video, one of the things that made Star Trek great back in the Desilu and Paramount eras was that they didn't stop and explain to the audience what certain things meant or how they worked very often. So when you watch the show, they referred to the room where the captain's chair was as the bridge. They didn't stop and tell you that the bridge is where we control the ship. They just used the term. Likewise for terms like hull, sick bay, dispensary, bulkhead, and deck. These are all nautical and naval terms. For a lot of people who had not served in any navy or perhaps the United States Marine Corps, uh, these were unfamiliar terms whose meaning had to be deduced uh, by how they were used on the show. The show didn't explain the terms directly. So when fans of the show saw that personnel from other ships had different insignia, they naturally concluded that this was the norm, that ships like the Exeter, the Constellation, and the Antares all had their own insignia apart from the Enterprise's Delta. When the franchise made the jump from television to movies in the late 70s, many of them saw the Delta all over the place and cried foul, and later rationalized away that the Enterprise was such a shit-hot vessel that Starfleet decided to make the Enterprise's symbol the symbol of the entire organization, and now every ship in Starfleet wears the Enterprise's old Delta. This is, however, incorrect. What if I told you that in the original series, what Starfleet personnel wore were various examples of a Starfleet duty insignia? What if I told you that the only starship that had their own insignia was the USS Exeter, and that was, in reality, a production goof that was never repeated again on the original series. Well, many of you would probably do what I did the first time I heard this and balk at it. But in the immortal words of the dude... Well, I'll tell you what I'm blathering about. I've got information, man. New shit has come to light. Now, there were clues on the show way before the new information I'm going to share came to light. For example, in the episode Court Martial, when Kirk and McCoy go to the Officers Club on Starbase 11, every single Starfleet officer there is wearing the Delta. And dialogue makes it clear that these are officers from ships other than the Enterprise. Then we come to the episode The Tholian Web, in which the dead crew of the USS Defiant are all wearing the Delta. Now, interestingly, when we next see this ship over on the 2005 episode of Star Trek entitled In a Mirror Darkly, the uniforms of the Defiant crew magically have different insignia. We'll offer an explanation for that a little later. But then we come to the episode The Omega Glory, and Captain Tracy of the USS Exeter and his chief medical officer Carter, who clearly have a different insignia on their uniforms. Well, that brings us to the new information we mentioned earlier. A few years ago, a memo was unearthed that was written by show producer Robert H. Justman, to show costume designer William Thies. It reads as follows. Whilst in dailies today, um, dailies refers to the daily footage that they review of what was shot uh, for a given show. Uh, that's what they call that in Hollywood. 
It was noticed that a starship captain from another starship was wearing an emblem unfamiliar to yours truly. He's referring to Exeter Captain Tracy here. I have checked the occurrences out with Mr. Roddenberry, who has reassured me that all starship personnel wear the starship emblem that we have established for our Enterprise crew members to wear. He's referring to the Delta here. Doubtless this situation has arisen due to the fact that a different starship emblem was used last season on Charlie X. However, the personnel of that other ship in that show were the equivalent of merchant marine or freighter personnel, and therefore not entitled to wear this proud insignia on their individual and collective breasts. Please do not do anything to correct this understandable mistake in the present episode. However, should we have Starfleet personnel in any other episodes, please make certain they wear the proper emblem, under penalty of death, signed this 18th day of December in the year of our Lord 1967 by Robert H. Justman, Chief Inquisitor. Despite the lighthearted playfulness in the memo, which can be chalked up to diplomacy on the part of Justman, this is the proverbial smoking gun regarding this particular topic. It establishes that, at best, only the Exeter had their own emblem slash insignia, and that was a clear mistake made by the costume designer, a mistake he never repeated again in the original series. So let's go down the list of duty insignia we saw on the original series. The first one is obviously the Starship Duty Insignia, which is the aforementioned Delta. It is worn by fleet personnel assigned to Starfleet starships. This insignia can also be likened to insignia used in the United States Navy. For example, the U.S. Navy's Submarine Warfare Specialist insignia, worn in the same position on the chest as the Delta on Star Trek, uh, gold worn by officers, and silver worn by enlisted. Here you see the officer gold dolphins, and both the costume silver version and the actual silver variants worn by enlisted personnel. Here is an example of the surface fleet equivalent, the ESWAS, or Enlisted Surface Warfare Specialist emblem, also worn in the same place on the chest as the Starfleet Delta. Next we have the Spacecraft Duty Insignia, worn by Auxiliary Fleet Merchant Marine personnel like the crew of the Antares in Charlie X. Then we saw the Outpost Duty Insignia, worn by Outpost and Colony assigned personnel like the ones seen in Balance of Terror and Arena. We also saw the Cadet Duty Insignia, or more precisely a recreation of one on the form of Cadet Finnegan in the episode Shore Leave. It's a small pewter version of the bigger gold one we'll mention next. The Starbase Duty Insignia, worn by personnel on space stations, at headquarters, and also ground installation personnel. We saw this one in several episodes, including the two-part story, The Menagerie. The last one we'll talk about is the Field Command Insignia, worn by senior Field Commander personnel. On the original series, we saw this one worn by only one character that I'm aware of, Commodore Decker from the episode The Doomsday Machine. This emblem has long been assumed to be the one worn by all Constellation personnel. But that wasn't the case, of course. We never saw any other personnel from that ship other than Decker, and Decker was a Commodore. Now, what is a Commodore? A Commodore is a flag officer and the lowest rank of admiralty. Commodores were often put in command of battle groups in the United States Navy and in other navies like the British Royal Navy. The Constellation was his flagship, meaning the ship that he actually served on while commanding the battle group as a whole. Now, we never hear about any of the other ships under his command except the Constellation, and clearly the Enterprise wasn't one of those ships under his command, but it all checks out. In my own experience, I know that submarines can be part of carrier battle groups, uh, while others, the majority of them in fact, engage in what we used to call independent ops. Earlier I mentioned that on the original series episode, The Tholian Web, the USS Defiance dead personnel all had deltas on their uniforms, but when the ship jumps into the Star Trek Enterprise story in A Mirror Darkly, the uniforms sport their own insignia. My guess is that the makers of Enterprise, who were largely fans of the original series, especially in Season 4, 
were working under the assumption that the Defiant was supposed to have her own starship insignia, since that's the misconception most fans have had over the years, and assumed that the crew wearing Deltas in the original series was either a mistake or a cost-cutting measure. So they came up with one for the Defiant uniforms for that story. Now, doubtless, some of you are wondering where I'm getting all of my information from. I got it from several sources, but the one that's most relevant is this article by John Cooley on StarTrek.com, the official Paramount Star Trek website. The article was published in 2021, and I'll leave a link in the comments below. Thank you for watching.